And we're asking our common council to support the people tomorrow mm. with a vote affirmative for the emergency rent assistance grant from the U.S. Treasury. And this is just a start to what needs to happen in our community. Housing has been a problem in our community for a long, long time. And we're just hoping this is going to be the beginning of a serious effort to resolve those issues. If we don't make the right decision, and that decision is, what are we going to do to help people? That's it. They ain't no other decision. So if we really to help the people, that's the only answer. We got to use the money to help people stay in their home. Don't lose their home. Get, go back to work. That was the crime. And I'm under no illusion. I, I believe that the council will do the right thing tomorrow in making sure that we accept this money, this federal money, so that we can make sure that citizens in our city, the neediest people in our city, have the opportunity to benefit and stay in their homes. Now, uh, for folks who may have a, a question about how it's going to work, we're going to use that money to help supplement the programming that we already have in place uh, via uh, SDC, um, working to disperse those funds to renters uh, in the city of Milwaukee who need access to funding to stay into their homes uh, right now. I'm Alderwoman Jo Casta Samaripa, and I'm so honored to stand here today with these leaders from Souls to the Pole, with my colleagues from the Common Council. I've already voted in favor of this in committee, and tomorrow I look forward to voting uh, on this $17 million in rent assistance for our people, for our, for our city. We have to make sure we bring this home uh, for our neighbors, for our constituents. And, you know, I was born and raised on the near south side of the city of Milwaukee. We've always been home to an immigrant community. Maybe a generation or so ago, we were more German and Polish, and today we're more Latino and Southeast Asian, and African refugee, but we're still there, and we need help. Many of our, my constituents are those essential workers who never got to use, use Zoom to go to work. They're still putting on their uniform and going to work every morning. They're those renters that need the help to make sure that they can get through this pandemic like the Reverend and the pastor said. And so again, I'm looking forward to joining my colleagues on the Common Council and voting to accept this $17 million in rent assistance, bringing it home to the city of Milwaukee for its people to make it through this pandemic. The despair is palpable of people trying to survive with no end in sight to the pandemic. A lot of people in this neighborhood are essential workers. A lot of them were employed in the service industry. A lot of them are employed in, in low wage positions, security guards, uh, servers at the Wisconsin Center District, which of course has been largely closed because there are no conventions. Uh, these people are desperate. There are many people in our city who do not have the support system that is in case of emergencies like these. And they will end up on the street. This is a very serious matter that has to do with life and death. But this is only the first step. The eviction moratorium expires at the end of February. It must be extended or there will be an explosion of homelessness in Milwaukee and statewide. This past summer, uh, from June 1st to September 4th, nearly 4,000 evictions were filed uh, in Milwaukee County Circuit Court. And those evictions undermine the health and stability of Milwaukee families and neighborhoods. And despite the passage, or I should say the enactment of the September 4th CDC order, evictions continue at an alarming rate. Just during the month of January, this past month, uh, there were nearly 600 evictions filed. And this, of course, impacts families who already have little or no financial reserves. Um, I would like to thank the local, state, and public elected officials who have stepped up in the past year and provided eviction prevention funding. Uh, it is uh, impactful. It's a game changer for families. It keeps families out of congregate settings in over what are already overwhelmed shelter facilities. Uh, and it has to continue.
I do want to clarify that the um, CDC order has been extended to March 31st of 2021. That's not long enough. We all know that. We're all talking about the summer or the fall, if we're lucky, uh, to be in better shape on this pandemic. So it needs to be extended out well beyond March 31st. We want people to understand that you have people fighting, mm -hmm. fighting for you. Right. And we want you not to give up and join the fight. Everybody who's having these issues, sign up to join the fight. Listen, last, we want the Common Council to vote affirmative for that 17 million to help folks with rent and utilities. And then we want all of us to fight for the full package, the whole 1.9 trillion from the U.S. government to go to U.S. cities to help folks who really need help. And while they're doing that, we want them to extend that moratorium while they're arguing about things that should be automatic. We don't want people getting put out their homes, put out on the street. We want folks to do the right thing, and if you can't do it right away, extend the moratorium so people won't be outside, freezing in the cold, because of this pandemic and the cold weather.